Hey guys and welcome back to G's Autos. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, happy story this one. I have uh, I've, I've fitted the um, the new uh, odometer, sorry, to the uh, EB gauge cluster and everything's fantastic. So I approach things a little differently this time in the way I did the uh, the, the the fixing of the uh, odometer. And um, look, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, it works, so it's got to be pretty good. Anyway, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit better compared to um, the previous video where I was a little bit frustrated with the car and um, disappointed in myself, uh, to be honest. Uh, so now I've got to fix a mistake, which I didn't want to happen, but it did. But anyway, we're on to the odometer now. Everything's fantastic. Anyway, guys, I hope you find this one useful. This was a bit more of a challenge doing it this way, but I really enjoyed um, doing this one. Um, I enjoyed the, the technical fiddly kind of stuff. But anyway, enough out of me. I hope you liked the video. Uh, hit the like button if you do. And um, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, guys, I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, so here we are. Welcome to part two of the Odometer Saga. So on the first, on part one, I should say, um, I, I removed the EA odometer and put that in, in place on, in the EB, uh, and it worked well. And then when I went to drive the car the next day, the odometer actually stopped working. So I stripped it down and these are the gears that were in the EA version. So they just basically disintegrated and um, were no good. So after seeing that, I went, right, okay, let's purchase some new gears. Uh, I did that and that's these pieces over here. So they're the new ones. Now, before I wanted to put them in, I thought, okay, well, let's, let's adjust the kilometers on the low mileage EA one. Um, so what I did, I actually, I saw a trick on the internet, on uh, YouTube, where someone used an air blower to um, basically blow on the gear here, blow the air on there, and boom, it goes super fast, and it will adjust your Ks up or down to whatever you need it to be. I applied too much air pressure, and it actually broke this gear here. Uh, it's... It, broke a little um, one of the teeth on the cog so that's no good so what I'm going to do now is remove the pin out of here as you can see I've already done it to, done it to this one here I've removed the pin uh, from the top and uh, there's two pins one that holds the uh, the numbers the number dials and one that holds the little gears along the top which move in time. So I've removed both of those, and so I'm gonna do that to the EB version now. Now the other problem I had when I used the EA version of the odometer is that the uh, cruise control stopped working in the EB. So look, these do look identical, but obviously they're different, um, different board numbers, so there may be some minor changes in there. So I am going to, I've de-pinned these uh, from the actual assembly. Uh, just used a pair of pointy nose pliers, and just gently uh, remove those pins out of the assembly. So just be careful when you are doing that. Uh, so the job now, remove the pins out of here. I have this tool, which is used for, uh, the guys at work use these for wiring and cabling. So I've borrowed that. And that's absolutely perfect for punching the pins out. And then I've also got a piece of um, uh, welding rod, which is almost the same diameter, which works absolutely perfect as well. So they're the tools I'm using. So first of all, I'm gonna just uh, put the tool in there and push that pin out and push that pin out, get everything out of the way. So that way I can remove that little gear there. So uh, let's do that now. All right, so I've just used that tool there to go in on the side, just up here, and just punch that pin out a little bit. You'll see there, I've just punched that pin out. Now I'm going to use the rod here to push through and remove that pin completely out of the side. And then I'll repeat the process for uh, that set up there. All right, as you can see, I removed the two pins. Now, when you're removing these pins, obviously use that to first punch it. Now, these can be very, very firm when you first punch it to, to unlock it. Now, when you, you might expose, say, three or four mil on one side, just use a uh, pair of pointy nose pliers just to gently pull that out. It might be a bit firm. Now, when doing this, be very, very careful. These plastics are old and they're brittle, so just take your time and be careful, be patient. 
All right, guys, it's a fair call to say that was fiddly. Uh, that's the first time I've ever done that, but now that I've worked through the process and understand it a lot better, um, I think I would do it a lot easier next time. Uh, so I'm very happy with the result. Now, basically what you need to do is get these um, these rods, excuse me for one second, these rods, and get them through to about that distance there so you can feed one um, one big cog, one little cog, big cog, little cog, and so on. Um, so that's what I found. So you start off with obviously that little cog there, then you do a little cog, then you do a big cog, a little cog, big cog, and then slowly work your way through. And then at the end, I was lucky enough to have a spare one of these, and I used that to put through the end there to line it up. Uh, so that's that, that way when I pushed these pins through just on the edge of the bench, very carefully on the edge of the bench, uh, it lined up perfectly and uh, went straight through. So very happy with that. Now, I can't stress enough, just be so careful with this. Um, you've got that little needle there for the Speedo and all the plastics. You've got your your, your lugs there for putting in your, your screws for the PCB and so on. So just be so careful doing this. Take your time. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with the results. So I've set it up to roughly where the car should be. I've just set it at 510,000. Uh, what I'm going to do now is put these little these little gears in, and um, I'll show you that one. We'll do that now. Okay, so it's time to put these little planetary gears in. I suppose you could call them. Um, so I put that little cog on the big cog. There's a little um, uh, locator for it. Now this has fallen over again. So stand that up. And then just drop that in. All right, so that sits in place like that. And then this is the little drive gear. Um, that one there just sits in like so. And the housing, whoop, the housing for the PCB goes straight over the top. And you've got your two little locators there for your Phillips heads. And um, yeah, then I'll just uh, re-pin, put these back in where they need to go. And uh, that one is good to go. Then I can chuck it in the car and uh, take it for a spin. And fingers crossed, it is all good. All right, everything is done. So I've put the two pins back in. They went in nicely. And I've also put the reset button in for the um, trip meter. And um, it's a lot firmer, moves nice and smooth. And as you can see, the little bit of lithium grease just on those cogs is just coming through, so that'll that'll roll nice and smoothly. All right, so all I need to do now is put it all back inside the uh, the cluster. Put it in the car and take it for a drive and uh, make sure it is all working um, normal and we've got happy days. All right, so I've put the dash, uh, gauge cluster, whatever you want to call it, back into the EB. I've just got the car running, so it's been, look, it's, it must have been a month now since um, I actually finished the, uh, the odometer in the cluster. But um, when I started this up, after doing the front end, it developed a bit of a... Uh, an electrical issue um, so the battery wasn't quite charged jump started it that was fine then after about two or three minutes the car would turn itself off not too sure why uh, put some fresh fuel in it still did it uh, so what I, I disconnected the battery checked the earth all that was good still played up a little bit and then I put it in neutral and I've left it in neutral and it's been running fine no dramas hasn't turned itself off i've switched it back to park and looks like it's continued to um behave itself not too sure what the go is but anyway the the dash is in there and i'm going to take it for a drive shortly just to make sure that odometer works and if it doesn't i give up i'll leave it at that all right as you can see it's still set at 510,000. i've just gently placed it in there uh, look if it if this time around it still doesn't work the odometer I mean this way I can just easily remove it and just throw it straight out the window um, so that way it'll be 
an easy fix. Uh, so I'm going to take it for a drive. I'm hoping this electrical gremlin has decided to uh, remove itself from the vehicle. Uh, otherwise it could be a very interesting and annoying afternoon. All right, there you go, happy days. It's still in the car, it didn't go flying out the window. And you'll see the odometers, the little trip meter's a little bit shorter. I did do a test on that. See if we can get it in there. Yay, good stuff. All right, no need to throw that out now. Um, that's all good, really happy with it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, hopefully you find it helpful as, uh, well, well, I hope you find it useful if you want to do that yourself. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.